I actually really quite like what I'm wearing today, but I feel like in the camera, I kind of look like a tour guide, <laughs> especially with this pinafore and with my come from away badge, I look maybe like I'm a tour guide for Canada. Hi everybody, I hope that you're all doing really well. So today I am back to talk about the books that I am planning to read when I am on holiday. With any luck, travel restrictions pending, I should be going away. And whenever I go away, I tend to get quite a lot of reading bashed out, especially because as I've said in the past, my family aren't very big like sightseers when we go on holiday. One day when I plan my holidays myself, that might all change. But for now, when I'm going on holiday with my family, it tends to be kind of a sit in a villa and relax kind of affair, which for me as a pale freckly human, who does not go sunbathing, that really means I get a lot of reading done. And so I have to pack to accommodate this. The past few times that I've been on holiday, I have tended to pick what I refer to as hype books. And I like to pick up a few books that have had a lot of attention and publicity over the past year or so, but for whatever reason, I have not picked up yet. That would have been my plan for this year, but unfortunately my TBR is quite extensive. And I feel like buying new things is probably not the best thing to do. So what I've decided to do for my holiday TBR for the next couple of weeks is that I'm just gonna take a bunch of the paperback fictions that are still ongoing on my TBR and try and read as many of those as I can. I tend to go for fiction books when I go on holiday just because of speed of how quickly I tend to read fiction versus non-fiction and also it means that when I come back in November I will have plenty of choices to read for non-fiction November. I also like to pick a book or two up at the duty free at the airport. I think that Axiom Zen by Lindsay Ellis might be out by the time that I go on holiday so fingers crossed I'm able to find that in a bookshop or at the airport otherwise we will see what I find when I get there. And yes, aside from that, let's just get into these books that I'm going to be bringing with me. The first thing that I'm planning to bring is actually not fiction, it is non-fiction history, but I feel like if I do not read this on holiday, then I'm going to be in my own bad books. And that is Canute the North Sea King by Ryan Lavelle. This is the next book that I need to read for the Penguin Monarch series, and I feel like if I just take two and a half weeks off of doing this series, then I'm never gonna get around to this book. I feel like I should try and aim to get this read quite early on on my holiday, read the book, script out my video, so that when I come back off my holiday, I am all set and ready to do the Penguin Monarch video. This is the plan, help me stick to it. And now onto the fiction books. The first fiction book I'm planning on taking with me definitely fits into the category of hype books. Something that I probably wouldn't have picked up for myself without hearing so many positive things on Bookshoe, but I'm really excited actually to pick this up and that is Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. You know, I am a big rom-com girl, but I don't tend to make it a priority of my reading, but I feel like there's something about picking up a rom-com on holiday that is just so satisfying, so relaxing, very comforting, and I've heard nothing but good things about this. Chloe Brown is a chronic ill computer geek with a goal, a plan and a list. After almost but not quite dying, she's come up with a list of directives to help her get a life. Enjoy a drunken night out, ride a motorbike, go camping, have meaningless but thoroughly enjoyable sex, travel the world with nothing but hand luggage, and do something bad. But it's not easy being bad, even when you've written out step-by-step -step guidelines. What Chloe needs is a teacher, and she knows just the man for the job. Redford Red Morgan. With tattoos and a motorbike, Red is the perfect helper in her mission to rebel. But as they spend more time together, Chloe realises there's much more to him than his tough exterior implies. Soon she's left wanting more from him than she ever expected. Maybe there's more to life than her list ever imagined. My main thoughts really about this is that the guy looks suspiciously like Bill Weasley. I wonder if that holds true to life. Then next up I have The Mothers by Britt Bennett. I have previously read The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett last year and I quite enjoyed it so I'm definitely interested to see what else she has written. It's the last season of High School Life in Nadia Turner, a rebellious, grief-stricken 17-year-old beauty. Mourning her own mother's recent suicide, she takes up with the local pastor's son. Luke Shepard is 21, a former football star, whose injury has reduced him to waiting tables at a diner. They are young, it's not serious, but the pregnancy that results from this teen romance and the subsequent cover-up will have an impact that goes far beyond their youth. As Nadia hides her secret from everyone, including Aubrey, her God-fearing best friend, the years move quickly. Soon Nadia, Luke and Aubrey are full fledged adults and still living in debt to the choices they made that one seaside summer. Caught in a love triangle, they must carefully manoeuvre and dogged by the constant nagging question, what if they had chosen differently? So this seems like a lot of small town gossip, a lot of intrigue definitely intriguing to me. <laughs> the next on my list is New Acquisition. It is historical fiction and <laughs> I've not heard anybody on booktube talk about it but I heard about it from a podcast which made me most interested to pick this up and see what it was about and it is Hurdy Gurdy by Christopher Wilson. I've heard this pitched as like a comedy about the Black Death and that was just like 
what is in this book, I want to know. It is the year of our Lord, 1349, and it is the season of the plague. Brother Diggory's life is about to change. The sickness is creeping ever closer, and the monks of his order must attend to the afflicted. He is about to meet the plague. What he doesn't realise is that encountering an illness and understanding it are two quite different things. An uproarious and uplifting novel about sickness and health, and how perhaps we're never quite as cutting edge as we might like to believe. I feel like reading something that is humorous about a disease, about an illness, a pandemic is going to be quite entertaining but very poignant reading for right now. And just the idea about writing humorously about the Black Death seems like I gotta read that. I want I want to see if it can be done. Next up is a fiction book I have had on my TBR for a very very long time and has to be read this holiday I think and that is Wife After Wife by Olivia Hayfield. This once again is historically inspired and it is a modern reimagining of Henry VIII and his six wives but Henry VIII reimagined as a business mogul. But like his historical counterpart, he does somehow end up going through six wives. Divorce, murdered, died, divorce, departed, survived. Ruthless, devilishly handsome businessman Harry Rose is head of Rose Corporation, number 18 on the Forbes rich list, and recently married to wife number six. But now with his business in the spotlight and his love life under scrutiny, Harry's perfect world has the potential to come crashing to the ground. From 80s young gun to noughties billionaire, there's a reason why Harry's many wives have found him impossible to resist. But behind the money, sex and glamour lies a truer tale of infidelity, conspiracy and lies. Loosely based on the trials and tribulations of the most infamous historical playboy of them all, Henry VIII, this tale of glamour and serial monogamy will leave you wickedly entertained. I've said before that I feel like this is either going to be the best thing I've ever read or the worst and I'm quite excited to find out which it is. Next up for historical fiction we have The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donoghue. This is another historical fiction book that has a pandemic as the main focus of the plot and this is not actually the first book that has a link to another book on this TBR. Dublin 1918. At an understaffed hospital in the city centre, nurse Julia Power is called to care for expectant mothers who have recently come down with an unfamiliar flu. Into Julia's regimented world step two outsiders. Dr. Kathleen Lynn on the run from the police, and young volunteer Bridie Sweeney. Over the following days, and in the darkness and intensity of a tiny ward, these three women change others' lives in unexpected ways. As they struggle to bring new life into a fearful world ravaged by war, they must watch their patients succumb to a deadly disease. And yet, with tireless tenderness and humanity, carers and mothers alike somehow do their impossible work discovering that human connection and love are possible even in the darkest of times. I feel like this is going to make me cry and I don't know how much I need that on holiday, but maybe it'll be cathartic crying. <laughs> That's how I feel about watching Little Women anyway. I always feel at the end of that, like I've deserved the cry. Like it was clearing away some cobwebs, unleashing ghosts that I didn't know I had. <laughs> maybe the same will be true about this book. Next up, we have The Emperor's Babe by Bernadine Evaristo. This is another recent acquisition that I picked up last weekend at a Waterstones run. This will be my third Bernadine Evaristo after previously reading Girl, Woman, Other and Mr. Loverman and this seems like quite a different thing. Historical fiction that is sent in Roman Britain. Scroll back 1800 years to Londinium AD 211 and slip down the side of Gracechurch Street. Here roams a back alley beauty, a pulk, a pulcherum, a, a pulcherum, a babe? What? That is a word I have not encountered before. How do we say it? How do we say it? Pulcherima. That is not helpful. Pulcherima. Pulcherima. That is not helpful. I'm gonna go with a Pulcherima babe, a Nubian knockout with tangled hair and bare feet. Zuleika is a reluctant teenage bride with no idea about true love. She's too busy sneaking out with the slave girls and drag queens until one day she catches the eye of the most powerful man on earth, Emperor Septimus, and the trouble really starts. Silver-tongued and merry-eyed, this is a tale to make the muses themselves roar with laughter and weep for pity. Kaleidoscoping distant past and vivid present, the Emperor's babe sings a song of womanhood and of survival in this thrilling, brutal, breathless world. From what I know this is actually written in verse so it'll be a little bit different to the other historical fiction offerings that I'm reading and I am most intrigued to see what I think of this offering from Bernadine Evaristo. Penultimate book on my holiday TBR so far is The Children of Jocasta by Natalie Haynes and this like the last book I'm going to show you are another pairing because this and the next book I'm going to show you are both inspired by Greek myth. This one being inspired by the myths of Oedipus and Antigone. Jocasta is just 15 when she is ordered to marry the king of Thebes and old man she has never met, but it is her duty to produce an heir who will alter the course of her life forever. Ismene is the same age when she is attacked in the palace she calls home. Since the day of her parents' tragic deaths, it has been the one place she felt safe, but with a single act of violence, all that is about to change. With the turn of these two events, a tragedy is set in motion. 
but not as you know it. The Children of Jocasta follows the lives of two forgotten women in the myths of Oedipus and Antigone, casting fresh light on these ancient and engrossing stories. I have previously read A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes, which was her last fiction book, as well as Pandora's Jar, which was her non-fiction, and I thoroughly enjoyed both of them, so I'm really interested to read this. This is an older Natalie Haynes book, I think it came out in 2015, I want to say? And yes, I'm a big fan, I love Greek myth retellings, so I'm very intrigued to read this. And then finally, the last book that I currently have on my holiday TBR, Things Might change. I might add, I might take things off, I don't know, uh, but currently on this list is House of Names by Colm Tobin, which I believe is a retelling of the story of Clytemnestra and Agamemnon. Can I just say that it took me three goes to actually say both of those names properly without tripping up over them? Yay me! <laughs> but like most Greek myth, it gets dark. On the eve of a great battle, a father commands the death of his daughter to save his army. Three years later, he returns home, and his murderous action has set the entire family, mother, brother, sister, on a path of intimate violence. As his wife seeks her revenge, the remaining siblings must find a way to right the wrongs of the past, even if it means committing themselves to a terrible, barbarous act. I feel like that synopsis doesn't give too much of an idea of what Colm Tobin's spin is going to be of this story. Is it going to be a straight retelling? Is there going to be a subversion to the myth? But either way, I'm a big fan of Colm Tobin. I've previously read The Testament of Mary and Brooklyn, so I'm definitely interested to read more from him and especially his Greek myth retelling. We know I love a Greek myth retelling, especially if it is actually set in the time of the myth itself. I'm not really one for modern retellings of myth, but I do love them when they are set in the time. I'm sure there is a better way of phrasing that. Let me know what the word is. I, I'm, it's on the tip of my tongue, but I don't know it. But there we go. Those are the books that I currently have on my TBR for reading when I'm on holiday. Like I say, luggage, weight restrictions permitting. It does feel really weird not to have much in the way of nonfiction on this list. And I feel like my TBR is currently just staring at me. Like there's a lot of history nonfiction that is like, Charlotte, why aren't you reading me? Why have you forsaken me? But they're all quite chunky and I know that I wouldn't read them quite as quickly as I would the fiction. So I'm sorry guys, you're just gonna have to do without me for a couple of weeks. I am really looking forward to just being on holiday. Don't get me wrong, I love my job. I, I think I think I've got a great job, but it is sometimes nice to have a little bit of a break and feel, you know, recharged, refreshed, re-energised for the end of the year. Do let me know if you have read any of the books that I've spoken about today. Are you due a holiday coming up? What are you planning to read for it? I'd love to know. I hope you're having a fantastic, fantastic day and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Bye! Which I believe is a retelling of Clytemnestra which I believe is a retelling of the story of Clytemnestra and Agamemnon. <laughs> which I believe is a retelling of the story of Clytemnestra and Agamemnon. I almost had that. I almost had it. <laughs>